This video is to uh, show students at home what all of our lab equipment pieces will be and what their uses are for. So I've got the names over here and what they're used for here that go along with the handout that you have access to online. And if you are in class, this might be a great video for a review before our quiz. Um, but this handout is available online and how I'm going to go I will have numbers on the cards, but I didn't number it on the sheet. So you're going to, we're going to go this direction all the way down the paper. Okay. So we're going to start in this top left corner and work our way across and then go down to the next row. Okay. Uh, so if you would like to number your pictures on the handout, that's great uh, because I do have numbers. And then the back side is blank. So you can write notes to yourself about what things are used for if you don't remember that. And these 26 items will be tested on, quizzed over, not tested on, um, so that when we get into a lab situation, you know when I say to grab the crucible, you know what that is, okay? So the first piece of equipment that we are going to start with is the striker. Uh, some people might have seen a striker before. So this is what it looks like. Our striker is what we use to start a flame. So um, I have to be careful with the technology, but you rub the flint against the steel and it produces a spark. And that spark will light up our Bunsen burner so that we can have flames for heat and other purposes in lab. So that first picture is a striker. Some people might call it a sparker, but I call it a striker. Okay, next, going horizontally across. They are called crucible tongs. So crucible tongs are one of our many types of tongs that we have. Um, if you look, the tip is pointed downward and then there's a small opening here and they're very flat, if you see that. Um, crucible tongs are to hold and move a crucible. So. Um, you might hold them like so. I actually prefer to flip it over and have the pointed side down when I'm holding it. But these hold a crucible, crucible tongs. If at any point you need to pause, go ahead and pause. I'm gonna try and speed this up faster than what it takes in class. All right, next one, the name kind of describes what it looks like, a clay triangle. So a clay triangle is in a triangular shape it's wire with ceramic pieces. And the purpose of a clay triangle is to hold a crucible above a flame. So um, a crucible is small enough that it will actually just sit right inside there and then we would suspend it over a flame like such. Well, we've mentioned crucible twice now. So the next one is a crucible in lid. So a crucible looks like a little acorn and the lid, um, the lid is not that important for the naming, but um, the crucible is used for heating small amounts of solid chemicals. So we would put a small amount of chemical in here and then we would use our clay triangle to suspend it over a flame, like so. And then when we need to move the crucible, we don't like to use our hands, especially if it's been heated so it's hot. And so then that way, you would use the tongs, lifting one piece at a time. Okay, so crucible used to heat small amounts of solid chemicals to high temperatures, and there you go. Okay, last one in the top row. It's also made out of a ceramic, and that is called a evaporating dish. So it kind of looks like a bowl, if you see, notice that, but do you see how there's a little lip right there? That's for if you have liquids, then you can pour them out. Okay, um, and so the evaporating dish is used to heat liquids until evaporation occurs, so to very high temperatures. Um, but the crucibles for solids and the evaporating dish is for liquids to heat them up. And ceramic heats up higher to a higher temperature without cracking than glass. So that's why we have some of those materials for our equipment. Now down to the second row. We're starting right here, okay. Um, you probably know what this is. This is a test tube. So 
So you probably have used test tubes in other science classes before. Um, general definition of a test tube, it's used to mix and heat up chemicals. After a test tube, this one again comes, the name comes from the material. This is called a wire gauze. So the wire gauze um, is used for many different purposes. Most of the time it's used to support an evaporating dish above a flame because you can just place the evaporating dish right on it, like so. Um, but this white piece, this material, is um, it helps spread out the flame. So if you, like, have you ever seen a candle? That's just one little spot of a flame. But then if you have the wire gauze working, then it will distribute the heat evenly to the bottom of a bigger sized material or piece of equipment. Another thing we use wire gauzes for is just um, placing it on the table and then if you have something that's hot, just letting it sit there so that it can cool down. Because I don't know if you've ever witnessed it before, but Sometimes, if you put something hot on a cold surface, like the countertop, then it may break, and we don't want that to happen. So, that's wire gauze. Number eight is a Bunsen burner. So, here's our Bunsen burners. I have the tube connected to it. All right, I don't want to see on this video. Um, this is how we're going to get a flame. So, this provides heat or fire in any of our labs that we need. So before we have a lab that we use a Bunsen burner, which I think in the first lab we actually do, or second lab, we do use it, um, then we learn how to adjust everything and all of that. So this is a Bunsen burner. Okay, you've seen the next one before. Got a small one so it fits in the camera. A graduated cylinder. So a graduated cylinder, hopefully you know, measures the volume of liquids. So um, the reason why it's called graduated is because, I know it's kind of hard to see, I tried to get another piece of paper here. Um, so there's lines on the side, that's why it's graduated. And when you fill it up, that tells you the volume in milliliters for this one, um, what that is. So we don't use bigger objects, we use graduated cylinders to measure volume because it's a more accurate reading. After that, next we have one of our two tools to help us transfer chemicals. I'm just gonna lay that down right there. This is called a spatula. So you have spatulas in your kitchen, right? Um, the way that you can know that it's a spatula is on the end, it's very flat, but in the middle it's rounded on both sides, actually. Um, but, and then some people think that it looks like a little like kayak paddle for a little hamster or a mouse or something. Um, but this is nice because it will get small amounts of liquids, like the size of your pinky nail, uh, or small amounts of solids, sorry. And you can transfer those into your test tube, like so. So the spatula, the use of it is to transfer small amounts of chemicals when needed. The next one has a lot of fun name. They're called hot hands. They're just a way for you to pick up hot pieces of equipment. Um, it's made out of silicone. Like you might have a hot pad like this. Um, so they're made out of silicone. It's to move hot beakers around. Now we're down to the third row. Some people call this next one a scale. I hope you can see it. Let's see. There you go. It, in chemistry class, we call it a balance. Um, and I know that probably in elementary school, you guys used triple beam balances, but we don't have time for that, so we use electronic in chemistry class. And the whole point is to find the mass of an object, not the weight of an object. Um, and so we would plug these in, we learn how to use them, it's great. So whenever I say in the lab, find the mass, you just go to the balance and read what it says. Okay, next one, you guys know what these are. These are safety goggles. Not Google's, goggles. And what are they used for? Eye protection. So it's gonna get hot, it's gonna be, you're gonna be sweaty. Um, these are nice because they have the foam, which helps not leave so big of lines on your face. But then there are also these venters that you can open up to try and help you um, 
stay cool if you're getting a little hot and bothered underneath um, your goggles. And we will talk about in class where a good area would be that if you need to take off your goggles for a second to kind of cool down, um, where could we do that? So we'll talk about that in class. But simple answer for what they're used for, for eye protection. Okay, the next one, the next two look very similar. So um, there's, this is a good reason why I have the piece of paper down. This one is a thermometer. And a thermometer is used for measuring temperature. So you have used thermometers before. Um, and we just have to know we use Celsius in chemistry class. So everything is going to be in Celsius. And we actually learn how to read it accurately where you estimate an additional digit. So we're going to estimate decimal places with our thermometers this year. Okay, so the next one in the picture, they look very similar to the thermometer, but it's not a thermometer. It's just a piece of glass. This is called a stirring rod. Some people call it a stirring stick, stirring rod, either one is fine. And what does it do? It stirs chemicals. So whenever you have to mix chemicals, stirring rods do the job for you. The next one at the end of the third row, this is called an Erlenmeyer flask. So I'm gonna set it down for a second so I can flip my cards. Um, an Erlenmeyer flask is a cone shape um, and this cone shape is such that you mix liquids. Because of the side, um, when you swirl it around, the liquids will not fly out the top. Um, even though it has the graduated lines on it, it's not as accurate as a graduated cylinder. So we would use the graduated cylinder and then pour liquids in. But it's used to mix liquids around. And the bottom is nice because you can rub it on the table and the liquid would swirl around. You don't have to use a stirring rod. So that's the end of the third row. Um, the next one, I'm gonna have to move the camera. So I'm gonna show you what it is first on the cards and then I have to move the camera to show you what it is in real life. So the next um, on row four is called a ring stand. And this is a support element. Um, we use it to support things, to suspend things in the air, to put things over the Bunsen burner flame this is the ring stand and so the bottom portion I put this ring here so you can see uh, but then I also put this is called a test tube clamp maybe if I can figure this out um, up at the top so you can put a test tube into this portion right here over a flame or the ring for example we could put the wire gauze there and then we could put the evaporating dish on top. Or we could put the clay triangle and then we could put the crucible in like so. And then if we're doing that and we need to heat it up, we can put the Bunsen burner underneath. So this is what a setup will look like for labs. Um, we do this pretty soon in the year. But a ring stand, basically, it's used for support. and. After the ring stand, we have this one everybody knows. The name is a beaker. And very broad definition of a beaker is that it will mix chemicals. We can put liquid chemicals in here. We can put dry chemicals in here. Um, again, sometimes they have the graduated line. Sorry. Um, but we are going to use a graduated cylinder. And then we can mix chemicals. We can heat up chemicals. We can hold chemicals. All kinds of stuff. We use lots of beakers and I have lots of different sizes of beakers. Like for example this one is a 250 milliliter beaker. All right next one is another tool to transfer chemicals around. So the spatula remember it was like a little kayak or that moves a lot of small amounts but this is called a scoopula. This is one of my favorite names. Scoopula. It looks like a little half pipe. I don't know if you can see that on the video. Um, but you scoop chemicals with it. Um, so the technical definition is to transfer a large amount of chemicals. Um, it just depends on what you need. So if you need like five grams, you're going to use a scoopula so it can go pretty fast. If you only need like a half of a gram, then the spatula would suffice. So there you go. Okay, next, it looks like a plate. 
made out of glass, but it's not. Um, some people say that it looks like a contact lens or a monocle, um, or Mike, Waz Mike Wazowski's contact lens. No, it is called a watch glass. So the watch glass, sometimes yes, we might just like put chemicals on top, but the technical definition of a watch glass is to be a lid for an evaporation dish, evaporating dish. So it fits perfectly onto the evaporating dish. And notice how there's still an opening. So the steam, as it's evaporating, it's losing, it's going away in gas form, can still escape. And then it's nice because you can see inside to see what's happening, and you know when it's done. Okay, last one in row four. This is going to be one of the tools we use to clean things. It's called a wire brush. So a wire brush is used to clean equipment. It's usually the right size to clean out a test tube, okay, where it fits right in. Um, but we are going to be very careful this year about cleaning all equipment all the time. So um, sometimes you might need to scrub it with a wire gauze. Um, I have sponges for like beakers and those big items. But um, even like cleaning out a crucible, you can use the wire brush to clean the crucible out. Um, and you have tons in your lab station drawers so that you can be sanitary. Okay, last row. Some people know what this one is. This is actually what the label or the logo for Walgreens. Um, it's called a mortar and pestle. If you want to be technical, the bull part is the mortar and the pestle is the crusher part. And so a mortar and pestle is used to crush chemicals and grind up chemicals like so. Um, we may use this once, maybe twice during the school year. But it's always cool to know what a mortar and pestle is called. Okay, next. This one, people get confused from far away if they don't have their contacts in or wearing their glasses. It looks very similar to the striker, but it's not a striker. Uh, this is called a test tube tong. And what do you think it does? It holds a test tube. So um, you have to be very careful because when you squeeze, that's when it opens. And it fits a test tube perfectly in right there. So if I grab the test tube, you would hold your test tube like so. And so sometimes when we're doing experiments, it might get very warm. Um, and so the test tube tongs are great for moving those test tubes around. So you don't hurt your hands. Okay, next one. The picture looks different than what we'll use in class. The picture looks like a medicine dropper. Um, but this, kind of hard to see on the yellow. This is called a pipette and a pipette is used to transfer small amounts of liquids. So if you need to just get like five milliliters of water, you could use the pipette to do that. I'm sure that you have used pipettes in the past, so um, transferring small amounts of liquids. Okay, we're almost done. We have one more set of tongs. We have a total of three sets of tongs, and this is the last one. This is the biggest tong of them all. And um, what's different about it is it has the silicone covering on the end and it has a wider opening. And that's because it is used to move beakers. So they're called beaker tongs and the purpose is to move hot beakers. Now, um, in class, we'll usually give you the option of using the hot hands or the beaker tongs. Some people like one better than the other. And it asks you with your size of your hand and the size of the beaker. Um, but you would just pick up the beaker by using the tongs. Okay, last but not least, the very last one. Um, now, I'm gonna show you what it is, but on the picture, it's only this little portion part on the right side. So this ring stand is the support mechanism, and then the cross is a, is a clamp that holds the last one. And the last one is called a burette. And a burette is used to dispense small amounts of liquids. So it's a very long tube. This is gonna look interesting. Um, so here's the end, okay? This is called a stopcock where you can turn it and it will dispense, it will let liquid fly, fly through and then you can turn it off and it will stop. 
You can even adjust it so that it's just coming out one drop at a time. Sometimes we need to do that in the lab. But uh, the way, one of the reasons why it's so great is uh, because it is graduated, just like a graduated cylinder is, but every single line here is a milliliter, whereas on, or as a, sorry, is a tenth of a milliliter, whereas on a graduated cylinder, it's one milliliter, here it's a tenth. So we can even be more accurate using the burette. And we will use the burette at the end of the year in Chemistry 1 um, for our labs with acids and bases. So we will review what it is and how to use it after, when we get to that point. So that should have covered all of the items on the study sheet. Um, feel free to watch this as many times as you need to. Go back, pause, use it how you need to um, to learn the equipment and what they're used for for the quiz.